This video is going to be about how you can tell the difference between INTP and INTJ using practical observations and real life examples. If you're typing someone as INTJ, the first thing that's going to stand out to you is that they like to speak about how events connect to each other. So how something in the past connected to something that's happening uh, or that might be happening in the future or how something in the past led to what's currently going on, but they're not really going to be speaking about what's currently going on under the current circumstance. They're not really going to be talking about that unless they're talking about how something led to what's currently going on. You're really going to see this kind of person uh, reflect a lot on technical information. So you might see them studying a lot, reading academic sources, reading textbooks, and just in general, they're going to be gathering a lot of information so that they can uh, they can form uh, factual explanations. Generally, while people of this type are giving factual explanations, they're going to be clearly stating their subjective stance on an issue. So this is kind of like a bias that someone of this type is probably going to be kind of honest about because they're probably not going to be spending a lot of time researching or giving explanations on things they don't care about. So right off the bat, you're already going to know if they're not talking about something, they probably don't care about it. And if they say you are having a discussion with them and they don't state their opinion about something outright and they just don't follow it up or don't make a comment on it either way, they probably don't really care about it because otherwise they'd be talking about it. If you spend a lot of time around these people, you're probably going to notice that they do show flashes of competitive spirit. You'll start to notice that a lot of their motivations are competitive, especially in areas that they have a lot of interest in and they know a lot about. They're going to want to be playing against other people, in a sense, that have a lot of knowledge in that area. So it could be something that's intellectual or it could be a sport. They're going to want to check themselves against other people. Going along with that, they're not really going to want to stay engaged in conversations that they don't think will have some kind of practical application or that they'll derive some kind of concrete benefit out of. Also, what's considered practical to them or something that's going to give a benefit to them is like is going to be based on a lot of th on things that are very subjective to them. So you might not even see this until after they're done working on something. You're not really going to see that what you were talking about had a practical application. So you might be speaking about things that are very abstract a lot of the time, and then they'll drop certain conversations and you're going to wonder, okay, well, I guess like he just didn't like, why did that person not want to talk about that? And you're just going to be like, okay, fine. But after a while, you'll see that they're probably going to be trying to work on something related to abstract things you're speaking about. To recap, what you're looking for if you're typing someone that's INTJ is someone that reflects on a lot of technical information and gives insightful technical explanations in a few areas that they're really passionate about. And they also do like to compete in those areas. So they're looking for something concrete out of what they're studying. One of the bullseyes for me in typing someone that's INTJ is noticing that I'm speaking to someone who's very matter of fact about abstract topics. And along with being very matter of fact, uh, they're going to be also very passionate probably. So there's going to be distinct opinions, even if I'm just meeting somebody for the first time and I'm talking to them about something that's technical and I haven't asked for their opinion, they're probably going to give it anyway. And they also have um, a kind of an inadequacy in being able to relate whatever they're passionate about emotionally. So this takes the form of, of just factual explanation. So even if this person is very enthusiastic about something, you're probably just going to get a factual explanation out of them. Clips we're going to be looking at in this video are of the chess champion, Bobby Fischer, and university professor, Peter Atkins. And again, we're going to be looking out for someone that's insightful, technical, passionate, and a little bit competitive. But at the same time, they've got a little bit of a problem expressing themselves emotionally, or at least expressing their passions emotionally. Like to crush another man's ego. Uh-huh. So when they go home that night, you know, they know that they can't kid themselves that they're so hot, you know. 
Do you think the Russians are pretty worried about you at this moment? Oh, yeah, they have been ever since I started playing chess. Even as a little boy? That's right. I remember the first thing they ever wrote about me was, uh, you know, he's a talented player, and, uh, you know, they showed a game I played, and then they said, but all this publicity he's getting and all of this attention cannot fail to have a harmful effect on his de you know, personality development. And sure enough, a few months later, I was a rotten person already in their press. I was doing this, I was doing that, I was conceited, you know. This is, you know, before I'd ever even, you know, they even knew anything about me personally. You know? They sting you. They get yeah. to you. Well, they don't anymore because I realize it has nothing to do with me. You know, if you were a great chess player, they'd be saying the exact same things about you. Physics that underlies chemistry. And on the other hand, you can reach out into applications of chemistry like those which explain biological processes and organisms in general. So it puts you right into the heart of understanding modern science. What I wanted to do was to share with you my vision of the principles of chemistry so that you know how chemists think as they stir away at their, at their liquids and boil their, their liquids and distill their liquids. And I also wanted to show you why I think it provides the, what I call the infrastructure of the modern world. Take away chemistry, take away the products of chemistry, and you're back in the Stone Age. So I want to enable you to look around, look at the world through a chemist's eyes. Moving on to INTP, if you are talking to someone that's INTP, they're going to be very structured in their reasoning. So someone that's INTP, when you're talking to them, they may bring up hypotheticals and they may bring up far-fetched scenarios and uh, possibilities that seem to come from nowhere. But at the same time, they're going to be really strict in how they reason these scenarios out. They're also not going to be the easiest people to follow in their reasoning because their reasoning is very personal and specific to them. But if you keep an open mind and you try to follow what they're saying, if you talk to someone that's INTP for a while, you'll get a knack for understanding where they're coming from. With that being said, you're probably going to notice that if you're speaking to someone that's INTP, they're really going to open up in a relaxed environment and really favor that type of environment in order to have creative discussion. So you'll get the sense that they like to keep their heads clear and they like to be in an environment where they can uh, really let their imagination flow and they don't have to worry about too much sensory stimulation. On that note, if you do take someone that's INTP to an environment in which there's a ton of sensory stimuli or there's a lot of loud noise or things that they're not accustomed to, you really can't expect them to open up and speak to you about the same creative topics that they normally do. Another thing that's kind of cool about INTPs is that they try to filter out and be removed from as much uh, subjective emotional uh, influence as they can when they're thinking. So they try to be, uh, they try to be very detached, and they try to have very clear and precise logical judgments. So by contrast to someone that's INTJ, uh, they're going to probably not really state their opinion up front. That's something that you're going to hear from an INTJ first, is their subjective influences. At least this is going to be true in terms of emotions, while they're both going to be analytical. In more specific terms, I mean here that you're probably going to hear an INTJ person be more likely to state their opinions before someone that's INTP. So in other words, the person that's INTP is more likely to actually sit around and deliberate and think about different scenarios a little bit more, probably before um, coming to any type of emotional conclusion than an INTJ person. At the same time, though, you're going to see the person that's INTP more clearly react emotionally to their conclusions. So while a person that's INTJ will probably speak to you on topics they've already thought about 
in terms of uh, what they how they feel about it emotionally and what they approve of and what they don't. Someone that's INTP is probably going to already have thought about uh, whatever you're talking about analytically to themselves. And this is just evident in the fact that you're not really going to hear them state their opinion directly in strong terms. Again, this is on analytical grounds. So someone that's INTP really values uh, the ability to have a structure for thinking that's completely uh, as far removed from subjective emotional influence as possible, which is really cool because they lay the groundwork for a lot of theory and they make sure that the theory is really tight and precise. The other side to this is that you're probably going to notice that someone that's INTP has a better handle on the ethics of a situation than someone that's INTJ. So in other words, someone that's INTP might come to a thinking conclusion that sounds very detached, but at the same time, they're aware of how that makes other people feel. Whereas someone that's INTJ that comes to a conclusion that uh, may have some kind of negative uh, emotional influence might not really be that adept at expressing that they are aware of that. The bullseye that you can kind of consider when you're trying to type someone versus INTJ or INTP is that when you're talking to someone that's INTP, you don't really get the sense that there's any competitive spirit that they really feel the need to show. You'll see this in that they're going to be probably more hypothetical and talking about things that are more far removed from reality than what you're going to notice when you're speaking to someone that's INTJ. This is also kind of cool because they'll probably, when speaking to you about something new or something that's interesting to them, they'll outline it as if it were closer to the current circumstance than it probably is in actuality. But it's still interesting because they have all the logic uh, usually defined. Whereas someone that's INTJ, they're probably not going to be that, uh, they're probably not going to be that engaging with regard to topics that aren't actually something that they're they're actively working on. So an INTP may already have the groundwork laid for something that they're not even doing yet which is kind of cool because INTJs aren't really going to share that information with you unless they have something completed. So they're going to be uh, coming across as more secretive and they're going to come across as uh, probably being a little less analytical because they are, they are putting less value in the thinking of the situation because INTPs are just putting, that's where the most of their effort goes is into the thinking. To recap, for INTP, we're going to be looking for someone that has very intricate logical ideas. They may be talking about hypothetical situations in very great detail from an analytical standpoint. They may have a little bit of trouble engaging their environment in a competitive way, but at the same time, this really isn't that big of a deal. Or it's not really something that you'll uh, that you'll be paying too much attention to because you're probably going to be listening to how cool their ideas are. On top of that, all of this is grounded with social awareness. So again, with INTP, we're going to be looking for someone that is clearly socially more aware than someone that's INTJ with respect to displays of emotion. For the first two celebrity INTPs we're going to be looking at in this video in particular, we've got university professor and philosopher David Chalmers and Elon Musk. We uploaded to him? Yeah. Along the way, uh, Neuralink is going to help solve a lot of uh, nerve problems. Like, so, uh, in fact, we're just talking about, okay, what would it take to uh, really solve for uh, spinal cord injuries? We already know how to do this. Uh, implant electrodes into the motor cortex of the brain, um, and then bypass the the severed section of the of the spine and have uh, effectively local microcontrollers near the muscle groups. It could restore full limb functionality. 
very exciting what can be done here. And, and it's just memory. Like, as people get older, they lose their memory. And so it's saying it's like, it's incredibly sad when a mother forgets her own children. Uh, and that can be solved too. I've seen you speak in person. We've watched some of your interviews. Like, sometimes you seem visibly sad about what's happening. I think we should try to take the set of actions that are most likely to make the future good for humanity. I'm pro, I'm pro human. It's about what we count as mental. Um, that's interesting already for philosophy, but if you start to think about consequences, I mean, maybe for example, for thinking, there are moral consequences. If you take away my, uh, my phone, you might've thought, okay, well, that's a form of theft. That's not so good. It's stealing. But on this view, you're actually taking away part of my mind. It's more a form of maybe assault or something. You're taking away part of my, part of my person. I, I think actually as this technology becomes more and more integral to our existence, I think, then it really does come to take on more of that personal moral status. It might also have a consequence for education. People say test the whole person. Don't, you know, so when it comes to, for example, can you use your computer or your phone in a testing circumstance? Well, if that computer or that phone is becoming part of your whole person, your whole extended mind, and it's going to be there in the future, then yeah, test the, uh, test the person with the phone, not the person without the phone. That person's irrelevant.